This video will compare the implementation of inheritance for C sharp and F sharp respectively. So many of the people that transition to F sharp have seen C sharp code before, and therefore I figured it would be interesting to make a quick comparison of how you would write inheritance between classes in C sharp and F sharp. So in order to start, we're going to look at the C sharp code of this, and we're simply going to create two classes and one of them, or each one of those has one individual parameter and one class is going to inherit from the other. So it's pretty much the simplest scenario that you could have. And we're just going to see how that would be, uh, yeah, implemented in C sharp. So let's begin. Um, we would define this as a public class. Um, like so, we would call the, the base class here base. Um, and we separate class in C sharp with the curly braces like this. We would get, define a constructor for this class. So that would be a public constructor. And we simply give it the same name as the class. And then you provide a parameter. We're going to say that this is an integer in this case. And uh, we'll call it param one like that. Okay. So then the implementation of the constructor um, would be in color braces again. And we would say this dot param one, let's give this a capitalized P there um, is this parameter that we were given like that and with a semicolon. And in addition to this, we want to create a getter for this and uh, a private setter because we don't want people to be able to set this from outside without using this constructor, but we want people to be able to get this parameter. So we will do a public int param one and then get and private set like that. All right, so that means we can access this. Now, let me copy this over and we'll make something very sim similar. Uh, so we'll make a derived class instead like this. I'll just change the name of the constructor to derived. Now, the constructor in this case will take two parameters. So we have the first parameter here, but we'll also provide another parameter like that. And here, we need to specify both in the class that this is going to inherit from base. That's how we specify it in C sharp. And here we also need to call the base constructor like that, because we want this first parameter to be used in uh, defining this first parameter. And we want to leverage the code from the base class in order to do that. Now, what we're going to change this to is parameter two. The reason for that is that the second parameter that we give now, we want to add this on top of the inheritance from the base class. And so in order to access this one, we need to change this here to parameter two, like that. Okay, so this is the structure in C sharp, we now have this derived class that inherits from base class. And whenever we initialize the derived class with these two parameters, we first of all get the base class um, constructor call up here, which defines parameter one for us with the associated getter. And Parameter two here then gets a get uh, and private set method as well. So this class would then have both of those parameters. Now we can see here that this is quite a bit of code to define this kind of relationship. And we're going to see in F sharp now that this can be condensed a lot more. So if we want to start by typing out the base class, we would do base like this, and we would expect a sing uh, single parameter. Now, because we have type inference in F sharp, we don't need to explicitly state what type that needs to be. We would simply say that we have a member in here that is um, this dot parameter one, and that would be parameter one like this. Okay, that's already the base class and it's done. Now for the, in, uh, for the inheriting class, we're gonna call it derived again. What we would do is we would specify two parameters this time, param one, and then we would need to specify parameter two as well. So param two, like that. And for the implementation here, we would say that we inherit. So if you look at the C sharp implementation that we just did, you would inherit a class with this kind of relationship. Now, in F sharp, we would explicitly state on the first row that we are inheriting from another class. So we would inherit base. And this would be base with a constructor for parameter one, like that. Okay. 
After this, we would define the second member, and this would be param2, like that, and we'll set that to have the input parameter value like this. Now, these are generic objects, and they can be defined to be integers if you want. If you want to specifically cast them to integers, you can do that, but you don't have to in F sharp. So comparing these two sets of code, we get the same functionality or the same kind of implementation, but you can see that the F sharp code is a lot more condensed. So or condensed. So in code bases in general, writing code in F sharp usually helps you to compress the code a lot and make it easier to see the key parts of functionality that actually help you get to the bottom of the issue you're trying to solve or understand something. Um, so that's a, a very quick overview of the comparison between C sharp and F sharp implementations when it comes to inheritance. We're going to look at further concepts around this going forward. So I'll see you in the next videos.